welcome everyone and how interesting the previous um, speeches, keynote speeches and the debate, really, really interesting. And we'll touch on a lot of them uh, going forward. The role of the Advertising Association is to really look at the challenges and the opportunities of our industry and then address them proactively so that we can help all of our associates. And we've just released our three-year plan with our goals and ambition. And central to our goals and ambition is ready. Central to our goals and ambition is in making the case for advertising. Sorry, I've gone backwards and forwards. Is our mission. Now, our mission is to promote the role and rights of responsible advertising. Advertising that is trusted, inclusive, and sustainable. And it's value to people, society, and businesses, and the economy. And you will notice we've added the bits in the middle. Because we believe that being trusted, inclusive, and sustainable is really the need reflecting all industries in our times, and it's what will motivate people to be part of this industry. Now, making the case for advertising means looking at the biggest challenges. And when we looked at uh, in the board and the council at the biggest challenges and opportunities, the issue of talent came up time and time again. It was a renew last year that we started to talk about it. And we were all feeling that we had some big challenges when it came to talent, which is why we created the task force and the report. But if we take a step back, were we just feeling there was an issue or are there facts to support it? Well, look at this. This is the numbers of people employed in the industry. It's th since 2019. Now you see a big drop during the pandemic. That might have been understandable. Everybody was looking to be really, really effective and efficient at a time of big disruption. But then you see that the trend, unfortunately, has continued after as well. We are finding ourselves now with uh, a level of employment that's 14% lower than pre-pandemic. So we were feeling the time we were, everybody was talking about the great resignation. Clearly, this is not unique to our industry, but it's something that we need to consider very, very seriously. But how have we got there? Now, we've touched on some of this already this morning. We've heard some contextual external trends or things that have happened, you know, the contribution of Brexit or making the labor market much tighter. The pandemic that has had a really big impact on how people work, why people work, and what they want to do and rethink about how they see work. And obviously, inflation and cost of living pressure, which is putting pressure on all of us personally, our families, our households, but also as businesses to try and be, again, more and more efficient with our resources. This has created a labor market that is tight, is more competitive. And by the way, this is a global competition. And it's not unique to the advertising industry, which means that we need to really tackle these challenges proactively. We need to take ownership of the agenda and we need to do something to really address it. Because let's be honest, our industry is made of people. That's all we have. So that's why we have created and set up the Talent Task Force. And this is a great opportunity for me to thank all of the company that has so far contributed. We want many more. We've put together over 20 HR professionals, heads in those companies, to really understand their insights, what they were seeing, what challenges they were facing. But we have also uh, commissioned a research from Credos to really try and understand the key drivers that were contributing to the talent shortage. And when we heard all of the feedback, the insights from the HR professionals, talking in our council and in our board, talking to our associates, and putting together some of the stats that we will see uh, shortly, we really can summarize the bigger challenges in, surprise, surprise, two big buckets. We have a big, big challenges in attracting and recruiting into this industry. And then we also have a big challenge in developing and nurturing and retaining the resources and the talent of the industry. And we know there are some really key elements contributing to these challenges, which we'll now address. Let's tackle attraction and recruitment first. The first hurdle that we fail at 
is the fact that the awareness and indeed interest in our industry with young children leaving schools and university graduates is very low. When they consider careers, they consider um, other, other professions like uh, banking, medicine, law, nursing. They are not aware of the contribution that our industry brings uh, or indeed of what they could be doing in, the, in this industry. So that's a real, they never consider it as a career option. The other factor that we've noticed, which is also very crucial, is that salaries, especially initially junior salaries, are very low compared to other industries. And therefore, you know, even if I knew about the industry, would I want to really uh, start with it? Now, let's look at salaries. Here's a little chart that's kind of built over time. This is the last 10 years. And we start with looking at a consumer price index. That's been steadily growing, slowly but steadily growing over the last 10 years, about just over about 20% if you look at the long-term trend. Our GDP that was following the same line, we've had a bit of a slowdown, we know, as an impact of the pandemic and potentially other elements, but still growing. Advertising spend has continued to expand, and in fact, in the last three years, has expanded even more, over 46% increase. And you've heard the, some of the stats for this year with you know, over 30% growth. But when you look at the salaries, and you look at all industry salaries, a slower growth, but something that's kept up with GDP at the very least in CPI. But when you look at advertising salaries, and marketing salaries, you can see that not only we haven't kept up with the trend, but in fact, there's been a very marked decline in the last two or three years in the advertising sector. So we find ourselves with advertising spend growing about 40% versus 10 years ago, but the salary is going down by about 10%. So there is a real issue here that we need to rethink completely. So when you put together what we have heard in terms of awareness and attraction. We have a problem of awareness, we have a problem of being interesting, and we have a problem of how we can actually recruit people into this industry. So what do we want to do? We, need to, we think we need to advertise advertising. Seems obvious, doesn't it? It's always the, the problems. It's like, um, is it the cobbler's um, children who never has shoes, that kind of thing? Yeah, so we need to make the case to really promote the idea that working in this industry can be exciting. We need to absolutely show that the creati creativity has the power to tackle the biggest challenges, which is something that, by the way, I think Dougie will talk to us about later from the IPA. We want to attract fresh talent to this industry. And we also need to start rethinking radically about remuneration and what that employer proposition looks like to make sure that we have the right tools. Now to the second bucket. If we were to be more successful in recruiting and attracting, what are the key bar uh, barriers to developing and retaining our talent? One big chapter is the underutilization of the apprenticeship levy scheme. It's a great scheme. I, for one, started in my career in advertising as an apprentice many, many, many moons ago, and it served me quite well, you could argue. The scheme is a fantastic resource, but we're not making the most of it. Um, we know that apprenticeship can help retention because both employees and employers say that when they are trained, they have practical experience, they are more inclined to stay. They feel they're invested in, and actually they become more skilled, better. But what we do know is between 2020 and 2021, there were just 1,220 apprentices in the advertising sector, which is 0.6 of the total of the employment. And this is way lower than many other professions, slightly higher than some other creative industries, but much lower than we could do. And we even know from a soon-to-be-released research from Marketing Week that more than half of the advertisers are not running a marketing apprenticeship scheme. And whilst those are great for people who feel that university may not be right for them, it is an important way for us to upskill, to attract younger talent, to get fresh talent, by the way, from everywhere in the country. As an AA, we are really working hard with government. You heard some of the reforms that are being considered. We need to 
add flexibility. We know there are many areas that need to be fixed. However, any of you in this room and at many companies who have a, a billing of more than three million are paying the levy anyway. So what is the way that you can use this money that you spend anyway and start with what we have whilst we try and improve it? We estimated, I think the IP, IPA estimated that all agencies who pay the levy, in order to recover the money, they would have to have about a thousand apprentices per year. The latest stat we have is 150. So there's a real opportunity there to at least use the money well, whilst we fix it and make it more, fec more flexible. The second pillar of challenge is that the career path in our industry is quite murky. It's not clear what it means to become a marketeer or an advertiser or how you move between those sectors or how you work in media indeed. And so there is a very poor mapping which adds to the confusion. And the third one, which is a really important one, is that our workplace proposition is now really quite broken. We know that during the pandemic, we had some benefits. You know, it was ne necessary to work in a, in a hybrid way, at the very least. And hybrid and flex flexible working served us well then. And another real good benefit, real benefit has been that it's helped people rebalance their lives and being able to manage the very demands that all of us have on our lives. However, this industry more than others perhaps thrives on collaboration, networking. You, um, we were talking earlier this morning, the buzz of being together in, in a room or outside and finally connecting the contamination of ideas and creativity. How are we going to foster that in this environment where we rigidly say, come back one day, two days, three days a week? And how do we really cater for the, another potential uh, downside, which is mental health problem and lack of learning from each other and training? This is something we really need to look at. So in order to retain our talent, we need to really invest in them. We need to make them feel valued. We need to create a rewarding workplace proposition, something that we're not doing and we need to do together. So what we propose we do is three things. First of all, make more companies aware and how they can take advantage of the apprenticeship levy, levy scheme. We will do so by creating an online guide containing all the case studies, the links to existing training, accreditation resources, so that it's just easier. And we know that greater training helps improve the effectiveness in the workforce, which is also something that Mark from ISBA will talk to us later, just shortly. We also want to create an online guide to all the industry skills. We heard something from the de departments as well, departments of education, all available resources so that we can train people more easily. But lastly, we want to really gather and commission some research-based solutions to in and out working flexibly and how can we recreate and re restart and kickstart the workplace proposition for our own industries. So, I'm trying to now bring it all together. I'm a visual person, so I said, let's have a nice build building block chart. How does this work? In the context of talent shortage, there are some things that we are doing as an advertising industry. And not just the three blocks of what I just shared, but don't forget that contributing to an inclusive place through the all-in census, contributing to the at net zero and becoming more sustainable and all of the activities we do with the government bodies and lobbying to help make the resources more accessible together with promoting awareness better talent um, nurturing and again lobbying that we do will be what the advertising association will help you with the outcome that we expect from the industry is therefore is to have better training, better reward and better workplace proposition, which actually means when you bring it all together that we will have stronger attraction and recruitment and stronger development and retention, which ultimately we think will make the, or everyone working in, the, in this industry feeling more valued, feeling that they can be more sustainable and feeling that they can be working in an industry that they can trust. So all of it comes together and it really feeds into our mission. And the really important thing here is there isn't a silver bullet and it, everything works only if everything works together. 
ultimately we want this mission, this industry to be, again, more responsible, more trusted, more inclusive and more sustainable. And we believe that by working together and putting all our resources together, we have a fighting chance to do it and compete again for something that is seen globally as the really highest benchmark in this industry. So what can you do? Well, you can join and collaborate with the task force. Please, we need all the help that we can get. You can partner with us. We want the creativity and the freshness in the ideas from the industry members to advertise advertising and make the case for the industry. You can get in touch for the apprenticeship levy and see what worked for you and contribute to the case studies that we will publish for the gu online guide. Most importantly, we really want you to continue to participate to the all-in census. The next session, the next survey will be on March 15th, so we really need everyone to continue to participate. And then finally, tell us how you put in skills and development and capabilities at the heart of your strategy. And then we will then share back for everyone to take advantage in this. We believe that by working together, we can solve this problem. We have some very key facts that we can address. And all of the resources to do this are available to all the members. The full talent report has been published as well. You can find it with all the uh, additional richness of the insight and the data. It's open to members. If you haven't joined the Industry Association, this might be a good time to do it. And with that, I thank you very much. Nina.